It's a pristine atoll ring that only just breaks through the surface of the South Pacific, an idyllic dot in Melanesia. The people of the Carterets live from the sea and what tiny land they have. 2,000 islanders squeezed into just over half a square kilometre. The islanders may have had little inside world, but they claim the outside world is destroying them. They say they are doomed. The island's sinking. We do see with our own eyes that our islands are sinking. We love the place, we love the islands, but it's sad to see this island going finish. Hello and welcome to World's Untold Stories. I'm Colleen McEdwards. A recent report on global warming warned that entire cultures are at risk of being wiped out if nothing is done. There's still a lot of debate about whether rising sea levels and rising temperatures are the result of pollution or simply normal cycles of climate change. But there's one group of people that doesn't need any convincing about this. In the documentary, That Sinking Feeling, Steve Marshall visits a group of islands in the South Pacific that seem to be disappearing one hut, one garden, one village at a time. The people of the Carterets are desperate. Lacking in food, their livelihoods destroyed. 400 years of occupation is about to end. While the best scientific minds in the world argue whether sea levels are rising by millimetres or centimetres, here predictions mean nothing. The damage has already been done. What's happening here is extraordinary. Since the 1950s, the sea has risen at a phenomenal rate, and no one can explain it. The Carteret people are at war with the sea. The biggest island, Han, is less than a kilometre long and ringed with broken sea walls. The islanders built rock and clam barriers in a futile effort to hold back the rising seas. Island chairman Andreas Rubin's ancestors arrived here centuries ago, but his own children will be the last of the family to be born here. We are right where my uh, grandfather's house was and the saw lines was out from my grandfather's house was out uh, about 18 meters. So the shoreline used to be another, 18, be another to 18 meters. 18 to 20 meters right. out there. Yeah. And out there there was uh, coconut trees and some other food gardens. The people can live off the land no longer. Swan taro, breadfruit and banana used to be part of a balanced diet for the islanders. Now the sea water that washes into the gardens at high tide has destroyed everything. This is the garden of mother of three Teresa Hetsi. Fruit once flourished, now all that's left is coconut trees. It means that I will have no banana now to eat, and I will eat uh, coconut only, without banana, because the sea 
spoils my garden. Fallen coconut trees litter the beaches everywhere, their roots eroded by the rising seas. At low tide, you can see where the gardens used to be, along with the stumps of coconut trees that grew here only 20 years ago. At high tide, the trees are completely swamped. At the moment now, the sea rises and washed away the roots of the coconut trees. The coconut cannot be a, a big fruit, only small ones. As day breaks in the Carteret's lagoon, a supply ship from Bougainville arrives at the outer reef. This battered ship has no anchor and has engine trouble. But the islanders are only interested in what's on board. The emergency rations of rice won't go far, but it's all that can be unloaded from a drifting ship. The ship doesn't come. The people just go hungry, as uh, usually is the case. Bougainville's Minister for Atolls is on board too. Tehu Pass is about the last person these people want to see because of what he's come to tell them. It's an island of myself. I feel very sorry with my people. Morning through. Morning. I feel for them. Make them look at me, that's all. My... Speaking from the bottom of my heart, I, I'm indeed very sorry that uh, uh, the situation has to turn out this way. The rice shipment has brought relief from a monotonous diet. But Teresa knows it won't last with the extra hungry mouths of her extended family. If not rice, we'll just live on coconut only. We just can eat uh, coconut only with fish. Island chairman Andreas Rubin takes me on a tour of the five other tiny islands in the chain. The destruction is striking. If there was any doubt that the sea levels were rising, you only have to look here at the island of Huaini. This used to be one island, but as the locals will tell you, about 15 years ago the rising seas began to slice right through the middle of it. The high tides never let up, and now the island is completely divided. Huaini 1 and Huaini 2. Remarkably, three families managed to survive on fish and coconuts on an island the size of a football field. Selena Netoy has given birth to seven children on the island, but fears her days living here are numbered. Our horses are getting closer and closer to the sea. The sea is coming closer to us. Maybe one day a tidal wave will come and just sweep every one of us out. Our horses and everything, our kids. So we never know when this will happen. Only God knows when this will happen. <laughs> <laughs> 